This buck, this big, huge eight pointer really is a giant. He would stand a foot taller at the back than other bucks his age or older. He would hit licking branches well above every other deer. He was just a true giant. And it's the reason we named this buck eventually Andre the Giant. This is the story of Andre the Giant, a buck that absolutely towers over all the other bucks on the property. Something I've never quite seen, a deer this tall, this large with this big a frame, a truly spectacular buck and an incredible story. So the story of Andre the Giant actually dates back a couple years to the 2020 season. And that's the year I shot Beamer, an eight and a half year old Wisconsin swamp buck, truly magnificent deer. And the cool thing about this is the week that I shot Beamer, obviously late October, was the exact same week that I got my first ever pictures of Andre the Giant. And the interesting thing about that is in 2020, when Beamer was eight and a half years old, he had pushed out all the other mature bucks and he had been doing so for multiple years prior. Well, now you look at Andre, it's his first couple pictures, first encounters on this property. He basically, you know, walked into this area. It was new to him. I shot Beamer and removed him from the area. And now the only thing he knows of this area is that there's not a big mature buck in it and he takes home and he takes hold and it becomes his new home range. Now entering the 2021 season, I didn't have a lot of hopes for the property because the big mature buck Beamer was now gone and he had been pushing off other mature bucks for several years. So there was no real upper age class buck. But when I was setting cameras and starting to collect intel, doing some scouting, this big, heavy, heavy eight pointer showed up that I didn't recognize right away. The mass showed signs of what would typically be a, you know, six, seven, eight year old deer, extremely massive antlers. This buck looked large enough on camera to where I had to start paying attention to this deer, a big, heavy, massive eight point frame. You know, it's at this point where I'm starting to compare pictures from 2021 to 2020. He's made a huge jump. I mean, he's extremely tall. He really just blew up. But it really just became a learning year for this buck. You know, see how he used the property, which bedding areas he liked, which food sources, how he interacted with other bucks. Was he a social deer? You know, just trying to learn as much as we can for the future if we were able to hunt this buck. And throughout the season, a couple things started to stand out. You know, one, he was not a real aggressive buck. He was more submissive. And the more information I gathered on this deer, the more trail camera videos, this buck, this big, huge eight pointer really is a giant. He would stand a foot taller at the back than other bucks his age or older. Um, he would hit licking branches well above every other deer. He, he was just a true giant and started to raise questions like, is this a genetic mutation? Is this a genetic freak? You know, what's the deal with this deer? Is he older than we thought? You know, he's a lot bigger than most of the other bucks. It's very interesting and it's the reason we named this buck eventually Andre the Giant because he did. He towered over all the other bucks in the area. Now it's late season, it's winter. This deer stuck around, he really liked the area. He called it home and shed season that next spring. I ended up finding one of his sheds right off the driveway of the property in a little tucked in pine patch. And man, he had way more mass on his antlers than we had thought based on the trail cameras. It definitely told us that this deer is a lot larger than we thought. Well, early March over in Wisconsin. <laughs> Looking for sheds. There it is. That's the one side of uh, a buck that i super excited he made it because it's extremely heavy. Let's see if we can get in there. Oh. Talk about some mass, baby. Woo -hoo. That's freaking awesome. This is like the number one deer I wanted to make it because he's a freaking stud. Look at that mass. It's crazy. Andre the Giant. Can't wait to see what he turns into this year. That is so much mass, it's crazy. Boom, baby. And finding that shed was also one more piece of the puzzle. Definitely showed where he liked to bed. One of his small little secluded bedding areas. And it's just picking up that little information is always advantageous in the future. So the next season, all eyes were on Andre the Giant. 
And sure enough, this buck showed up earlier this season and he was a lot more regular heading into the late summer months. And his rack was really similar to the previous year, but it makes you wonder, you know, this buck grew so much the year prior. Maybe it's just a proportion thing. Maybe his body's bigger, his body's taller, and everything about him has just become larger and it doesn't seem like he grew much, but in reality, he could be a giant eight. Taking last year's intel, trying to understand where he liked to bed, where he liked to feed, where he liked to get water, it all came into play on what we were gonna do this season, this summer. And one of the big projects was actually planting a bunch of the new Illusion food plot systems. It was actually, this property was a testing grounds for our new food plots. So putting in our brassica systems in certain areas, putting in easy greens in other areas, and one of the main big buck traps, we like to call it, for Andre the Giant was along the driveway of this property. Small, tiny little micro plot using our Easy Green system. It's a situation that I think a lot of people can relate to. It's right next to a driveway, there's a lot of human activity. The bedding area, the security is very small. There's a little clear cut spot that's one acre, one and a half acre. There's a little pine patch that's one acre. There's another little brushy area that's maybe one or two acres. If this is not a massive, highly managed section of property where this buck is living and feels home. So, you know, it's, it's that micro food plot strategy and that micro hunting plot strategy I think a lot of people can relate to. Another little sweetener we put into this plot is a little water tank. Just dug out a little hole, put in a water tank and filled it up. Um, I realized that this whole section of the property didn't have any water. So in order to keep deer in daylight hours and consistent in this part of the property, we had to add some water, so that was another key element. And enhancing these little plots, you know, giving the deer everything they need is what's always paid dividends in the past when I've used this strategy. And I hope that this is the tactic that's gonna take down Andre the Giant come fall. You know, after we got all these food plots in place and we're trying to maximize our opportunity for the fall, unfortunately we were hit by drought, so it was a long, dry summer, late summer, not a lot of rain, just enough to basically spark these plots and, and get them active again come season. But keeping that water hole filled in this spot was a huge tactic. I mean, it definitely kept deer in this area. And once that clover field greened up, the reveal cell cameras showed me everything I needed to know. The deer were using this plot in daylight hours and Andre was now a regular. So a lot of the pieces of the puzzle are starting to come together. And typically when I see a pattern on a mature buck like this, I wait for the perfect window to jump in there. Cold weather, high pressure, the perfect wind, good daylight activity out of that deer, because I don't want to ruin the opportunity. You get one shot at a big mature buck and I didn't want to jump in too early. I was actually headed up to the property with my family just for a family weekend. So I brought all my hunting gear. It was a 50-50 shot, like do I even want to try to hunt this deer? Pre-ruts approaching, we're kind of in that October lull and the weather was honestly about as bad as it could get for the entire season. A lot of really unfavorable conditions for trying to shoot a big mature buck. But, you know, I made a two hour drive. I think I can get in and out of this stand pretty easy. It's a good, clean access point. And the wind was okay. It wasn't great, it was okay. He's been daylighting in here a couple times recently in the past week. And I just feel like I gotta give it a shot. So I kind of decide last minute, you know, I better have my scent control on point. I better use the perfect access to get in, take it slow, because I can't afford to bump this deer when there's only, you know, a couple one acre bedding areas really close by. Now the access here is kind of an unconventional route to get in. It's not typical I would do something like this, but in order to hunt this stand, I actually drive back on the driveway out of the property, park by the shed towards the entrance of the property, walk around toward the road, and use all these human activity areas to basically drop into this plot. And by doing so, I'm trying to basically conceal my movement or my access into this stand as if I'm just another person doing everyday activities and I'm not a hunter or a predator. And how this little micro plot lays out, it lays in this power line location. The woods drop off to the west, and that's that little bedding area that's about one and a half acres. The stand location is to the south of this little plot, and I play a north wind which blows off the ridge to my back. I'm facing out front, and typically I like to hunt this spot in the evenings when the thermals will drop off the hill and blow clear off into the road right behind this location. 
Out front, there's a couple small little bedding areas. One's a pine tree area. That's where I found Andre's shed this winter. And then on the other side of the driveway is kind of a real brushy area, a couple acres of brush with some standing corn to the north of that. So these are some of those key areas where this buck, Andre the Giant, would bed if he's in this location today. And I'm just trying to access this location without bumping any of those spots, get in clean, get in quiet, and see if I can see Andre. So I'm all set up in the stand and a couple things really stick out to me here. The tree that was my backdrop for this whole setup fell down in a windstorm. So I'm sitting in this tree with basically zero backdrop, not a good situation. Another thing is there's a lot of noise. Like I can hear the neighbors, they're having a bonfire, they're you know blowing leaves with a leaf blower. And even while I'm sitting here, FedEx drives along the driveway and another family member drives along the driveway. So there's a lot of commotion, a lot of normal activity for this area. And I'm just hoping that, you know, it doesn't push the deer too nocturnal. And Andre the Giant is close enough to actually show up during daylight hours. Now I'm facing to the north. I um, just have this little micro plot right in front of me. My wind is from the west at this point and is supposed to slightly shift with a little south later in the evening. And the first thing, like a typical hunt, a doe walks in with a couple fawns. Not five minutes after these does walk off, I catch movement. And I look up and I immediately know it's Andre the Giant. There's no mistaking this buck. This is these dark, massive chocolate antlers. And this buck's a lot bigger in person than what he looked like on the trail cameras. And he's doing what all mature bucks do. He's taking his time. So he kind of stops at the edge of the food plot. His back legs are rubbing back and forth. He's laying down some scent on those torso glands and he's just basically analyzing the situation. It's that moment we all live for. Big Buck is approaching. That adrenaline rush kicks in and I'm on pins and needles because I don't have a tree behind me. I have zero backdrop and this deer is just staring around using all his senses trying to figure out if this situation is safe to walk into. And as Andre's approaching, I can feel that cool sensation on the back of my neck. The wind is shifting, the wind's swirling. Obviously not ideal when it's coming from behind me and the buck's out in front of me. He's getting a drink of water. He's about to turn around and probably go out to feed. And I got two situations that could happen. He could walk straight away and not give me a shot off to the left and go in the woods, or he could go back from where he came from, turn around, give me a quartering away shot. So I have to prepare for both situations. And it's that moment after the shot where you know you get that flood of emotions. Um, you're just super excited. It was a great shot. Everything paid off. You know, taking these risks, rolling the dice, jumping in. You know, this is my first hunt of the season for Andre the Giant, October 21st, and I can't believe it all played out. And this buck basically read the script. And I just can't wait to get out of the tree, get down, and see how truly big this buck is. You know, we know he towered over other deer on trail camera, but what was he in person? There he is. Just being able to put my hands on him and seeing him in real life, you know, this buck truly was a giant. And this deer was so large, he barely fit into a pickup bed with the tailgate open. We weighed him at 245 pounds field dress, which puts him at almost 300 pounds live weight on an estimate. That's a truly giant buck and a world-class animal. Knowing where this deer would bed, 
his preferred food sources, where I had him on trail camera in daylight hours. Using all that information for multiple years to build a strategy heading into the 2022 season and setting up all these big buck traps, you know, putting in these food plots, the brassica systems, this little micro plots of easy greens and adding a water hole, sweetening the pot, making this little area that he loved to live in, giving him everything he needed was a huge key to success. And as the season approached, being able to use the reveal cell camera information or intel to see what Andre the Giant was doing, you know, he began to daylight in these plots. I got some really great information from these cameras and it gave me the confidence to kind of roll the dice and make a move, even when weather conditions were very poor. From this doe group until Andre the Giant came in at 10 yards, my wind began to swirl and he was 100% downwind when I shot him. So the face send control system, you know, using that foam, taking a low key approach, and it's all these little details that come together in the end that allow for success like this.